Hello, this is a video for Mark Davis, the CEO of Dream Connections. Um, I'd like to ask some questions about your romance tours and maybe you could answer them either in a video or maybe you could come to my um, internet forum and answer them, wh whichever one you like. So yeah, I had, I had several questions and, and I'm not sure you, you've answered some of them. Um, I know you've answered a lot of common questions, but um, there, there's a few other questions in my mind about your tours, and, and maybe you could address them somehow. And and, um, and you seem to be very good at answering questions, so I think um, you'll have good answers to, to these. Well, first of all, the, the thing I'm skeptical about in regard to romance tours is I mean, it seems like in every group, the best looking women get the most attention. So what if like all the guys on your tour like the same two or three women because they're, they're the most attractive or the, they're the most charismatic? I mean, I mean, I mean, wouldn't it be like a competition fest between those guys? I mean, how, how wouldn't that create friction between the guys too? I mean, how, how does that get resolved? Because, you know, as you know, men are very visual and we tend to go for the most attractive woman even if she doesn't have good qualities or even if she's not compatible with us, we, we still gravitate toward the most attractive looking females. So naturally, you know, in a group of guys, I, I think you have about maybe 20 guys per tour now or whatever. I, I mean, what if most of those guys go for the same two or three women. I mean, wouldn't that create, uh, you know, a, a friction, you know, or, I mean, how can you have a camaraderie if there's competition for the same women, you know, I, I mean, I mean, in your videos, it seems like there's a camaraderie within your tribe, within the group of guys, but how can that be? I mean, how can you maintain that if there's competition? I mean, what if, I mean, what if even two guys like the same girl? I mean, I mean, how, how do they resolve that? I mean, you know, if if people are too competitive, it kind of creates like a friction or maybe bad blood between the guys. You know, I mean, even two brothers can argue over the same girl. You know, if they're trying, if they're both trying to vie for her love and her affection. So I'm wondering if that's a common thing on romance tours, and if so, how does that get resolved? I, I mean, does it resolve itself naturally, or, 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 or what? Because, especially with American men, I mean, America, because as you know, American culture is very competitive, so Americans feel like they need to compete with each other. But it seems like when you present the, the guys on your tour that, that they're not that competitive, that they're very fr friendly and... and there's a com camaraderie between all the guys, um, like like we're all one team, you know. But how can all the guys be all one team, like like a football team or a baseball team or a soccer team? How can you have that team spirit among the guys if there's competition? Because any, anyone knows that America is very competitive. It, it, there's people are raised to be competitive, not 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 harmonious not collective and America is also a very individualistic culture so naturally people are going to be individualistic and competitive there's not that social harmony you have in other countries like you know in Asian countries or or in European countries where people are more harmonious and, and less competitive so how does that play out I, I mean that that's something I've always wondered about um, not just with your romance tours, but with romance tours in general, okay? Um, so that's one question. And I guess my second question would be, on your tours, you say that you screen the women and also the men, the clients, too. And I, I guess that's a good idea if, if you want to produce quality marriages, but how exactly do you screen the women? I mean, I mean, <clears throat> um, I, I mean, 
I mean, if you just ask them simple questions like, are you marriage oriented? Are you a good woman? Do you have good family values? Do you have good character? Of course, everyone's going to answer yes to all those questions. Because, I mean, anyone can pretend to be nice and, and pretend to look good and pretend to be a good person. You know, if they have to, you know, e even bad people, even evil people, even scammers can pretend to be nice and tell you what you want to hear. So how exactly can you screen, you know, someone that's genuine from someone that is not? Or someone with good character versus someone with, with low quality character? I mean, you can't just ask them, are you a good person? You know, I mean, everyone's going to say, oh, yeah, sure. You know, I mean, I, I could tell you that I'm a good person, that I'm marriage minded, that I'm sincere, that I have good family values. But how would you know if that's true? I, I mean, you can't just go into the FBI database and, and look up a person's record, right? I mean, and I don't think in Ukraine the government records can tell you that much either. I mean, so I don't know. I, I would imagine that you would have someone that's really good in psychology that can read someone's body language, someone's vibe. And this this is not about you know being a trained psychologist even a trained psychologist in a university may not have the skills to read people I mean this is something more of an in, innate talent it's not something you can get from an education or from a university or from any training school some people do have a gift of reading people they can see a person's intentions and they can set, they can get a vibe from them and they can read body language very well some people have that talent that skill but I, I don't know who you're using to screen these women and whether that person has that talent or not. Because, uh, you know, I, I mean, we've never met your staff. We don't know what they're like. I mean, we don't know if they're, they're good at that. I, I mean, you can put your staff on the camera and, yeah, they might be nice and polite and professional, but that doesn't mean that they have a skill or a talent to read people, to separate the wheat from the chaff you know, or the chaff from the wheat or whatever. I mean, it takes a certain type of person to, to be able to peer into someone and see them for what they are. And some people have that gift and some don't. And, and also some people, even it, with, uh, with people who have that gift, there are some people that are very hard to read. You see, some people are very simple. They, whatever they are, they, they project on their face. So what you see is what you get. Some people are like that, very simple. But some people are complex and mysterious, and they're very hard to read. I mean, they, they can be very quiet, very stoic, very mysterious, and you can't really see what they're like inside because they ha they have a they have a thick mask, or, or they have a you know very stern exterior, and and you just can't read them. So you know, there's that factor too. Some people are, are harder to read than others. And in America, as we know, most people are, are pretty simple. What you see is what you get. But I think in, in Ukraine and Russia, people are more complex. They're more philosophical. They're more, um, I think they, th they think a lot more. I mean, I, I spent over a year in Russia, and, and I know quite a bit about um, women from the former, former Soviet Union. And they are deeper. They are more complex and, and it can be in a good way or a bad way, it depends, but they are more complex than Americans are. So with women from Ukraine or Russia or the former Soviet Union, what you see is not what you get because they're not always that simple. They're a bit more comp complex. And I guess if you are using um, Ukrainian women to evaluate other Ukrainian women, that would... would of course, be better because, I mean, women are, are better at um, at reading their own, I mean, people from their own culture. You know, for example, I, I'm, you know, a Ukrainian woman or a Russian woman may be able to pick up on certain things, you know, from, from women of their own country women, from women of their own country that, you know, an American guy could not 
pick up because you know there's a culture difference and, and there's a personality difference and, and supposedly women are better at reading these subtle clues you know especially when it comes to women of their own countries they can read these subtle clues and, 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 and pick up on, on things so um, but of course not all women are good at reading other women some just don't have that gift that skill and Another problem I, I see with women is that they, they tend to be quick to, to, to see the positive side very quickly. So, and so if one of the ladies that you screen, for example, it, um, says the right things and, and is very polite and positive, I think most women, I mean the screeners, most women will give them the benefit of the doubt and, and just believe what they say because women are more you see women are more polite and, and more politically correct so if you say the right things they'll they'll just accept it the way it is they're not going to analyze or nitpick too much they're just going to go with it what i mean is they they give them the benefit of the doubt and they see the best in in other women even if it's not there they they like to see you know the most positive aspect of everyone so, you know, if a woman is kind of in a gray area, she could be a good person or a bad person, and it's not clear. I think most lady screeners would just give them a bit the benefit of the doubt because they like to believe that people are nice. Um, because women have a more po politically correct view of the world and of other people. So as long as you're nice and polite, I think, you know, they'll they'll give you a, a go ahead um, so those are the potential problems I see and um, I mean those are the potential questions I would have if I was interested in, in going on on such a romance tour okay so that's question number two question number three is I see that you're running tours to Thailand now, which is great because Thailand is a beautiful, wonderful country with great culture and great food. But the thing is, I'm wondering why you pick Thailand and not the Philippines. Because as you know, um, there's a much higher success rate of marriages between Americans and Filipino women than there are between Americans and Thai women. So it does seem like the Philippines has a higher success rate in marriage with, with Western men, whereas Thailand has a lower success rate. So why didn't you pick the Philippines? And also within the expat community, um, and I'm talking about Western men that live in the Philippines or in Thailand, sometimes for years or decades or for the rest of their lives. If you ask these long-term expats in Asia, what they'll tell you is that Thailand is primarily a, 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 a sex tourist spot. It's a sex tourist haven for, for men that, you know, take, you know, go with bar girls and, and you know, you know, they, they want to have fun and, and go to the red light district and go to the go-go bars and, and um, pick up bar girls and, and sleep with them and just party around and, and whatever. Um, so it's primarily a haven for, for sex tourism, Thailand, whereas the Philippines is more for like love and marriage. So what expats tell you is that if you're looking for a sweet woman that'll treat you good, that will be a good girlfriend or a good wife, the Philippines is a better place to go for that because Thai women they're just not as warm and affectionate and they um, they're not as warm and affectionate and they're not as loyal that's what most expats tell me that have lived in Thailand and Philippines for many years so so in Thailand there's there's not this this sense of loyalty that it's just not part of the culture and they're not as sweet and warm okay so usually a Western man looking for a sweet girlfriend or a sweet wife will choose the Philippines for that 
But for fun and partying and go-go girls, they'll choose Thailand for that. And that's the majority of opinion in the expat community. Um, you can go to, to big expat sites and, and verify this, like stickmanbangkok.com or, or many other expat sites, and, and that's the general consensus. And I hope that doesn't <laughs> put any doubt in any of your clients' mind because... I mean, I don't want to spread in any any negative thoughts or doubt among your tour clients because, I mean, I'm sure they can research this and find this out for themselves. But as, but Mark, I mean, hopefully you'll prove me wrong because as long as, as you can produce couples and marriages, that's the bottom line. So if your tours to, to Thailand can produce... A significant amount of marriages and, and or engagements or, or couples at least that's really the bottom line if you get results and and I'm hoping you can in Thailand because then that'll prove me wrong and it'll prove this stereotype wrong too so if you can that's great but I'm just saying that that is the general view in the expat community out there so I'm wondering why you didn't pick I mean, why do you didn't pick the Philippines to do romance tours in? Uh, or maybe you will in the future, probably. Maybe it's something you're considering. I don't know, but maybe you could talk about that if you feel inclined to. Um, what else? I think that's three questions so far. Uh, I guess a fourth question would be... Um, This, this is a little deeper. The problem a lot of single men have is, is is not that they can't find someone. It's that when you... It, it seems like there's a pattern. It's kind of like Murphy's Law. It, when, you, when you desire someone or you fall in love with them, they don't love you back. Or sometimes they will, but it'll only last a few weeks or so because something goes wrong or they change their mind or whatever. And, and it's very subjective. Because as you know, relationships are about feelings, not about logic. And, and women sometimes can change their mind for no reason at all. And also sometimes the one you love is the wrong person for you or is not compatible with you. So the dilemma that single men face is that when they love someone, that person doesn't love them back or is wrong for them or, or just or changes their mind but the, the women that want them are not the ones they want they're just not attracted to, to the women that like them so it's a dilemma if you love someone they're not right for you or they, or they don't love you back and if someone loves you you're not into them so what if for example, someone were to go on your tour, and that would happen. I, I think you have, in, in your social t socials or speed dating events, you have about uh, maybe 100 women or whatever, okay? And that's a lot, but, you know, I've had this experience in Russia. I, I mean, I could meet 100 women just from talking to them on the street or in the subway or, or, or whatever out in public. They're, they're very approachable and easy to talk to because they're very down to earth and, and they're not afraid to, to talk to strangers. But even if I meet a hundred women, I, I mean, still, I could have this dilemma. The ones I like don't like me and the ones that like me, I, I, I don't like, you know? I mean, this is a common dilemma for of, that single people face. How, how, I mean, what if the same thing happens? What if, for example, I, went, I was on your tour and I meet a hundred women and none of them like me except for maybe two or three, and, and the, the two or three are just, I'm just not excited about them. I'm just They're just too plain, not not attractive, and just not much charisma, no no magnetism, there's no chemistry. It's not just about looks. I, I mean, the chemistry and the energy is important too. You need to feel a connection. You need to feel some some energy that arouses you somehow, not just physically, but mentally, and emotionally too so you need a certain energy to be aroused by a woman and it's very intangible it's very subjective um, so I'm not just saying that that this is about physical attraction I, I mean what if you know there's only a few girls on your tour that like me and none of them just 
don't none of them I feel any chemistry with. Because this happens in real life too. It, it's a dilemma. It's a Murphy's law, you know. Because the more you want something, the harder it is to get. It, it's just it just seems to be a principle in life, and it applies to many other things too. Not just not just love. So. You know, if I was a client, I would be worried about this. I would think, well, what if the tip of the same thing happens? You know, what if no one on the tour likes me except for a few women that I don't like? Then what? I, I, I mean, it's not easy to to get a match made in heaven, but but who knows? Maybe <laughs> maybe you're a miracle worker, Mark. I mean, I mean, from your own videos and from your testimonials, it seems like. You have some gift of bringing couples together. You have some talent in matchmaking. And I know that you claim to have produced a lot of couples, and your videos show that too. So, so I don't know. Maybe you and your romance tours have some gift or some talent behind it that can produce results. Um, I don't know because some people have a, have a certain talent. They're good at something, and when you do something you're good at, a lot of things seem to help you. It seems like the forces of the universe start helping you and, and and getting you more and more results. And pretty soon you're successful because you're you're doing something you're good at. You're you're following your talent. You're following your bliss. And so that happens. So so it could be Mark that that you're just. A savior to to some men, and that that they can't find their their soulmate in other ways, but but they can through you. I I don't know. I mean, I've met you once one time. I've met you once, Mark, and and um, I've seen that the you the person the you in real life is pretty much the same as the 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 person you are on camera. You know, it's pretty much the same. You know, you're, you're a very positive person, and you're a very likable person, and you have a certain charisma, and that charisma draws people to you. It, it gets attention. It, 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 I mean, charisma isn't just about having a great personality. It, it's an energy. It, it, it's a magnetism. It draws people to you. It draws attention. And that's why you get a lot of attention and a lot of clients on your tour, because of that charisma, and probably also because you have a certain talent in what you do. When people have the talent and the charisma in what they do, they, they start to get results. They start to become successful because they draw success to them. That's just what I see, you know, in life, in this world. You know, that's what successful people have in common. Um, so maybe you're, you're just very good at this thing and you can produce results that normal chance or normal destiny cannot it's very possible and so 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 maybe you're a matchmaking savior or 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 some type of you know um miracle worker so to speak that can produce results that other people cannot some people are gifted maybe you're one of those people and, and so you can produce results that are are, are beyond the realm of logic and, and maybe even beyond the realm of possibility. So when you're really good at something, the statistics don't matter. The logic doesn't matter. Linear logic doesn't apply when, when, you're, <laughs> when you have a lot of talent and magnetism, I guess. So that may be. I don't know. I mean, it, it seems that way. I mean, you do come across as a very charismatic, likable, magnetic person. And that appeals, especially in America, because America is like a positivity cult. They love to hear anything that's positive in America. Even if it's not true, people still like to hear anything that's positive. That's, that's the American culture. So in America, you would appeal to men for that, for that reason. So, I don't know, some of these questions are a little deep and complex, and 
I'm sure sure you'll have a great answer to all these questions. Um, so if you have the time, I, I know you're a very busy man, but if you have the time, maybe you could do a video and answer some of these questions. I think I've asked about four questions so far. Um, so, and, and I know you shine on the video. I, I think you're, you're, you, the video is a very good medium for you because your, your charisma comes out in the, in the video very well. So probably you look your best when you're on camera, whereas, you know, I don't have a lot, of, as for me, I don't have much magnetism on, on camera, but I do have some charisma in, in my writing because I, I write really good essays and articles. And I have some charisma in, in writing as an author. So my medium is more of, of a writer's. And I express myself in writing better than I do on camera, but it seems like you are very good on camera. So I'd imagine if you were to respond to this video, you'd probably do it on camera because you sh that's where you shine. But I don't know, if you want to come to my message board or forum to answer these questions, you can too. You're always welcome. Um, or you can do a video. Um, anyways, I can't think of any more questions right now. If I do, maybe I'll do another video. But I'm just saying those are my concerns if I was a client. You know, um, those would be my questions and concerns. Anyways, if you've gotten this far, Mark, I, I thank you for watching. I know you're very busy, and and and, um, and of course, when you're running a, a business, time is very precious. And and so, if you get this far, I thank you for listening, and um, good luck on the tour, and um, God bless, and thanks. Talk to you later. Bye bye.